And welcome back to News 46's Week in Review. The show was sold out for two nights at the Sanders Family Winery for the Shadow Mountain Community Players performance of Othello, a tragic comedy in way too many acts. Um, this is Othello, a tragic comedy in way too many acts. Um, it's pretty much the same show, only with a very comedic twist to it. <laughs> it's more like a parody. So last night you were packed. Oh yes, we had an amazing audience. They laughed, they joined in on the play. We had an amazing turnout and the play went absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. What parts do you guys play? I play Cassio, the loyal friend to Othello. Yep. And I am Bianca, Cassio's girlfriend. <laughs> How long did the rehearsal take for this? Oh, the rehearsal, oh, it took four months, six, I don't quite remember. <laughs> it's like when you start really doing it, you kind of lose track of time and, you know, everything kind of just melts together. Is this to benefit uh, uh, for a fundraiser or a charity? Yes, we are sponsored by Kiwanis for the Food for Thought program to help give meals to children throughout the summer for seven meals a week. You're going to also be performing this next week. Yeah, we are going to be performing this um, at New Hope Church next Saturday at 1 p.m., was it? Yeah, 1 p.m. For a matinee. Yeah. And then you're, are you going to be doing an evening show as well? Um, I believe we are at 5. At 5 p.m. And what is the fee? 7. 7 p.m. And what is the fee to get in? Um, for the matinee, it is $5. Yeah. And for the night show, it is $10. And this is all benefits the Food for Thought as well? Um, this is a um, yeah, Pathways of Hope thing. So, yeah. All right. And so for more information, is there a number for people to call? Yeah, you could call um, our home phone number, 775-727-6145. Or you could call um, one of our director's cell phones, which is 209-6200. And if you missed that performance at the Sanders Family Winery once again, you can attend this weekend's performance at New Hope Fellowship. For more information, call 727-6145. At Nevada Public Auction, Ski Senski invites everyone to this weekend's two-day auction at the Pahrump Nugget. We're showing you a few items that's going to be in part two of the Terribles Town uh, decor. For those of you who were fortunate enough to attend the last auction we did out at the lakeside, it was a phenomenal success. I mean, everybody complimented on such a good time. As I said before, this actually going to be two or three phases as the remodeling starts taking place at both casinos. This auction is going to be a little bit unique. It's going to be held at the Pahrump Nugget. Okay, we'll have it at the Pahrump Nugget, and it's actually a two-day auction. Day one will feature more of the items from both Terribles, uh, Lakeside, and T-Town Casino, along with a couple private estates. The uh, diversity of the items include some beautiful firearms, silver coins, the horses, the buggies, a lot of Western decor. Two of the feature pieces that are coming out of T-Town will be the Budweiser wagon that many of you seen. It was displayed in the bingo room up on the far wall. Along with that is the Bingo Baron. It's actually about, I would say, a one-fourth scale replica of the original Red Baron uh, biplane. Along with that, on Sunday, starting at noon, we're doing a feature comic book auction. In that comic book auction is a huge selection of graded Spider-Man comics, including the number one issue of Spider-Man. That is so, amazing, the number one issue. Yeah, exactly. Wow. The uh, Both auctions, of course, will be broadcast live on the internet at ProxyBid. You can look at the catalog on our website at www.auctionnv.com. If it's even close to the turnout in, in uh, the response we had at Lakeside, it most certainly is going to be a weekend of entertainment. Ham Radio Field Day will be held this weekend all over the world for 24 hours straight. Operators will attempt to contact each other during the event. During Field Day, we will log all of our contacts uh, and all of our communications uh, nationwide with all of the other participants in Field Day. Can anybody get involved in ham radio operations? Oh, of course. Uh, the only people by law who cannot are, are people who work for foreign governments like ambassadors. Anybody else, even foreign nationals, can. In fact, we have a, a member 
of the Air Breeze Group, who is a Dutch national, and he has a hand license for the, in the United States. You know, there's no age limitation, but there are six-year-old people yeah. who got licenses. Yes, there's even children that get ham radio licenses. That's right. Uh, I got interested in ham radio when I was 10 years old, and the bug bit me, and, and I've been a ham radio operator ever since. So where are you guys going to be set up so that people can come see? Uh, we're going to be at uh, the corner of uh, Harris Farm Road and Jerry, mm -hmm. and uh, the hours for the public to come and visit us will be from 8 o'clock uh, in the morning uh, to 12 uh, noon on Sunday, and on Saturday from noon to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's something to come see and see what you guys actually do there. You do actually give a tour, don't you? Anybody wants to show up, we'll show them what we're doing, yeah. and uh, if they want to try making a contact on the air, it's legal so long as we have a licensed person next to them. The chairman of the Nye County Republican Central Committee, Bill Carnes, spoke to News 46 regarding possible responses to the June 12th town board meeting in which three town board members were placed under citizen's arrest by him for approving two agenda items regarding repealing Ordinance 46, which the town board said was unconstitutional. If any laws were violated, mm -hmm. allow the Sheriff's Department to do their job. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't see that they were. Specifically, I read the same article that you're talking about with the Sheriff's Department possibly looking at filing charges against citizens who otherwise wanted to place the deputies under arrest for failing to take the town board into custody. Mm -hmm. I was not part of that. I wasn't even within 100 feet of that going on. Uh, there was one or possibly two people, I think, who may have articulated that. They may have to face the music on that one. Uh, when it comes to anything that happened inside the actual chambers, when I attempted to place them under arrest and the Sheriff's Department uh, refused to take them into custody, that's fine. We signed complaints instead, unarrested them, went to a criminal complaint. There, I, I, there hasn't been any discussion of anything going on illegal there. We've done our homework. I'm a former Nevada peace officer. Uh, we know the laws we were consulted with from a lot of people who understand these sorts of things. So I don't believe any laws were broken at all there other than the laws that the town board broke in their vote. The town board has said that their attorney, town's attorney, is looking into um, perhaps uh, going forward with charges against uh, the Nye County Republican Central Committee and the citizens too as well. Uh, I understand that. Uh, however, my opinion, having done this, and keep in mind, I've never met an attorney in a courtroom. I haven't beaten myself. I believe that their town attorney is actually a, a pretty poor excuse for representation of the town, and we should demand much better. He's also the one that advised the town you know, go ahead and make this illegal vote. So I, I don't put too much credence in that. Um, for them to file any sort of a false arrest charges when we were able to articulate elements of the crime and probable cause that they violated the law, they have yet to be able to do that towards me or anybody else in the building. If they can somehow muster that up, they have to realize a, even if they were able to lawfully make a complaint, would the district attorney entertain it? And if the district attorney enter entertained it, would there be any court that would actually charge? And would that court actually be able to convict on anything such as that? And I think the answer to those are no, no, and no. And what we're doing is we're seeing the the town board at this point in time with their representation rather with their attorney posturing is merely all that is if they have something then you know if i broke the law i should face the music on that and i knew that going into the meeting and uh right now well the sheriff's office has taken in many um complaints from the citizens i believe it was up around a hundred and these are felony charges that they the town's attorney said that in fact you guys did arrest them well, that's what the town's attorney said, and we attempted to arrest them. And here's the deal. If you place somebody under arrest as a police officer or as a private citizen, you can also unarrest them. Mm -hmm. So when the deputies took the decision to not place them into custody and, in fact, escort them out to their cars and let them go, mm -hmm. now that's the sheriff's prerogative, the department's prerogative to do that. Since they didn't actually get booked and shackled, mm -hmm. It was my opinion, all right, it's time to unarrest them. Since I'm the one who placed them under arrest, I then unarrested them and turned it into a criminal complaint. You were a former peace officer where? Las Vegas. I worked for Las Vegas Metro as a patrol officer. And um, so so you do have some legal background, And but did you go to an attorney for the opinion or, or you go from your own legal background? We went through several areas, and I'm not at liberty to discuss the areas that we went through because... Uh, some of those are confidential, and if the information was to get out where they came from, the, there might be some political ramifications there. And we'll have more local news and this weekend's events when we return.